Hello, my name is Alicia Benson and I'm the Great Lakes Program Project Lead here at the Toronto Zoo, where our mission is to connect people, animals, conservation science, and traditional knowledge in order to fight extinction. Have you ever wondered where the water in our rivers and streams come from or where it goes? Well, today I am on location at the Rouge National Urban Park, where we will be exploring watersheds, what they are, why they matter, and how each of us can help protect these vital ecosystems for the species that live within them, including ourselves. But what is a watershed? A watershed is an area of land that drains into a common body of water. This land will be drained by a network of creeks, streams, and rivers, which in turn will drain into a larger body of water, such as a lake or even an ocean. The boundaries of a watershed are not decided by people. They are determined by the natural landscape and shape of the land with the boundaries of watersheds being areas of higher elevation like hills, mountains, and ridges. Watersheds are composed of many different types of habitats and landscapes, like wetlands, forests, grasslands, farmlands, and cities, all playing an important role in the health and function of watershed systems. Watersheds can be large or small, with some covering millions of square kilometers. For example, the Great Lakes St. Lawrence watershed covers over 200,000 square kilometers and holds six quadrillion gallons of water, making it the largest inland watershed in the world. That's a whole lot of water. From the smallest creek to the largest lake, every watershed plays an important role in water cycles and movement on Earth, provide critical habitat for plants and wildlife, and provide immeasurable benefits to the people that live within them. But how does a watershed operate? When precipitation, whether rain or snow, enters the watershed, it can follow several different paths. The water may evaporate to form clouds and eventually rain or snow again. Some may seep into the ground, replenishing the groundwater, while other portions may be intercepted and used by plants, animals, or humans. It may also move downhill with gravity, forming streams which meet with other streams, gaining in size as they go. Each group of these small creeks and streams will form what's called a sub-watershed, which together with other sub-watersheds, move water to the largest body of water in the watershed. Water moves through a watershed in many ways, not only through the streams, rivers, and lakes, but also over land and underground. When moving over land, Water can pick up lots of things, like excess nutrients, bacteria, eroded soil, salts, chemicals, and particulate matter, which ultimately ends up back in our waterways. However, natural features in a watershed like soils, rock formations, and wetlands all act as natural filters. These features are not only important for regulating water quality, but also for flood control, nutrient cycling, and supporting biodiversity. When these features are altered, degraded, or destroyed, it has a major impact on the ability of a watershed to function and provide essential ecosystem services. Without wetlands or enough permeable soils in the forms of grasslands and forest, water moves through watersheds in more uncontrolled ways, increasing the risks of extreme flooding, erosion, and decreasing overall water quality in our lakes and rivers. Additional factors like increased urbanization as global populations rise and climate change increase these risks. So maintaining healthy watersheds will become even more important into the future. But why are watersheds so important? Watersheds support all life within them and their protection is essential for the health and safety of everything that lives there, including people. In addition to providing habitat for plants and wildlife, Watersheds provide reliable drinking water, food, energy, and recreation for everyone that lives within them. Every person and animal on earth lives within a watershed and relies on it every single day, whether they are aware of it or not. For example, your Toronto Zoo calls the Rouge River watershed home, along with the other one and a half million people who live within it. The Rouge River watershed covers 467 square kilometers of land, encompassing 48 communities and three counties. 
It is also home to 1,700 species of animals and plants. 23 of these are classified as species at risk, meaning that they are facing threats, often due to human activity, that may cause them to disappear from Canada or the world entirely. Some examples of these at-risk species found in the Rouge River watershed are the Blanding's turtles, little brown myotis, red side days, and even species of freshwater mussels like the eastern pond mussel. Each of these organisms plays their own important role in the ecosystem. Each of us can help protect our watersheds and the species that live within them as guardians of the wild. Here's how you can make a difference. One, reduce pollution. Two, save water. Three, support local conservation. And four, advocate for species at risk. Ultimately, every raindrop and snowflake that falls within the watershed is part of a larger system of interconnected water bodies, processes, and organisms. Thanks for tuning in, and let's continue working together to ensure our watersheds thrive for generations to come.